Welcome to Hitchhikers TV. Yeah, boy! Before watching this video, kindly subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and hit on the bell icon to be notified whenever we published a new video lesson. In this video lesson, let us explain the effects of electromagnetic radiation on living things and the environment. Spectrum is a continuous range of wavelengths. The types of radiation that occur in different parts of the spectrum have different uses and dangers, depending on their wavelength and frequency, electromagnetic waves form a spectrum of different wavelengths. This spectrum includes visible light, X-rays, and radio waves. Electromagnetic radiation can be useful as well as hazardous, colors of the visible spectrum white light can be split up to form a spectrum using a prism. This is a block of glass with a triangular cross-section. The light waves are refracted as they enter and leave the prism. The shorter the wavelength of the light, the more it is refracted. As a result, red light is refracted the least and violet light is refracted the most, causing the colored light to spread out to form a spectrum. This is called dispersion. Light, including the light produced by the sun, is a form of electromagnetic radiation, which is basically the type of radiation you find in the different kinds of light waves out there. Light waves don't have enough energy to penetrate into your skin, so they don't cause any damage to your cells. However, the sun also produces other forms of electromagnetic radiation that are invisible to human eyes. Ultraviolet light is a form of radiation that has a higher frequency than visible light. This means it also has a little bit more energy than visible light and can, therefore, penetrate into the top layers of your skin, causing damage to your cells and leading to a painful sunburn. Electromagnetic waves form a spectrum of different wavelengths. This spectrum includes visible light, X-rays, and radio waves. Electromagnetic radiation can be useful as well as hazardous, hazards of electromagnetic radiation overexposure to certain types of electromagnetic radiation can be harmful. The higher the frequency of the radiation, the more damage it is likely to cause to the body, microwaves cause internal heating of body tissues infrared radiation is felt as heat and causes skin to burn x-rays damage cells causing mutations, which may lead to cancer, and cell death, this is why doctors and dentists stand behind protective screens when taking lots of x-rays gamma rays also damage cells causing mutations and cell death microwave radiation microwave radiation can be used to transmit signals, such as those for mobile phone calls. Microwave transmitters and receivers on buildings and masts communicate with the mobile phones in their range. There is concern that microwave radiation from mobile phones and masts may be harmful to our health. Ultraviolet radiation Ultraviolet radiation UV, is found naturally in sunlight. We cannot see or feel ultraviolet radiation, but our skin responds to UV exposure by turning darker over time. This is called a suntan. This happens as our bodies attempt to reduce the amount of ultraviolet radiation reaching deeper skin tissues. Darker skins absorb more ultraviolet light, so less ultraviolet radiation reaches the deeper tissues. This is important, because ultraviolet radiation can cause cells to become cancerous. We should wear UV-blocking sunscreen on sunny days to avoid skin cancer. Overexposure of our eyes to ultraviolet radiation can cause blindness, so we should wear hats and sunglasses on sunny days. Radiation caused cellular damage while a sunburn is not a pleasant experience, the damage caused to living cells by electromagnetic radiation can sometimes be a lot worse. Inside every cell, there are chromosomes that contain all the information that tells your cells how to function and reproduce. Each chromosome is made up of a long chain of DNA. When cells are exposed to electromagnetic radiation, these DNA strands can be broken. This can cause lots of problems. If DNA is damaged, 
it can impair the ability of living cells to function the way they should. Changes in DNA caused by radiation can also be passed on when the cell divides, and these DNA changes can multiply and eventually cause cancer. Although ultraviolet radiation can only penetrate into the top layers of your skin, it can still do a lot of damage. Over time, you can get skin cancer and your skin may develop deep wrinkles, making you look a lot older than you really are. Other types of radiation, like X-rays and gamma rays, can have even more profound effects. Radiation caused cellular death X-rays, which have more energy than UV rays, can penetrate deeper into your body. They can pass right through soft tissues, but not through hard tissue like bone. This makes them really useful for imaging the inside of your body. Usually, short, limited exposure to X-rays does not cause much cellular damage, but if you are exposed to X-rays for a long period of time, they can cause DNA damage, too. Gamma rays have even more energy than X-rays and are, therefore, even more dangerous. Even short exposures to gamma rays can cause significant cell damage. Certain species are probably particularly sensitive to electromagnetic fields EMF animals, such as migratory birds, bats, and certain fish and insects, that are strongly dependent on magnetic fields for orientation or migration. Animals, such as sharks and rays, that possess electric sense organs. Animals with weak defense mechanisms. For instance, those with a limited ability to regulate their body temperature may be more vulnerable to the effects of high-frequency EMF apart from some minor local effects no significant effects of EMF on environmental species have been identified. Studies occasionally published on the effects of EMF on species in the environment have generally been scattered in focus and uneven in quality. The available data is thus insufficient to assess the risk of EMF for the environment. What possible environmental effects have been studied? The few recent studies on environmental effects of electromagnetic fields EMF, have mostly focused on extremely low frequency ELF, fields, such as those generated by overhead power cables. They mostly considered plants and not species that would be expected to be among the most sensitive to EMF. Previously, studies mainly focused on the presence or absence of visible symptoms, endpoints, for instance a decrease in pollen fertility. Such results are relatively easy to interpret but may not reveal more subtle effects at low levels of exposure. In the last few years, studies increasingly used more sensitive tissue or blood tests to obtain information about specific processes within the organism, using biomarkers. These have measured, for instance, the amount of antioxidants in the blood, substances that indicate stress such as alanine, in plants, and heat shock proteins, in animals, changes in the growth of certain plant cells, DNA changes. Such tests seem to detect changes at low field strengths which are much closer to those generally found in the environment. However, their interpretation in terms of species and ecosystem health is more challenging. Unfortunately these techniques have not particularly targeted species that would be expected to be among the most sensitive to EMF. In duckweed, exposed in the laboratory to low-intensity magnetic fields that vary in time at extremely low frequency ELF, an accumulation of alanine occurred. Alanine accumulation is found as a stress signal following many other kinds of stress and might be explained by the generation of free radicals by the magnetic field. Effects of low-frequency electromagnetic fields on snails were observed both in the laboratory and under overhead power cables. The authors attribute the effects to the generation of free radicals by the low-frequency electromagnetic fields. The authors also observed effects on cell components and on DNA. However, no physical damage to the snails was reported. Several studies on plants have examined the combined impact of EMF and other environmental conditions, for instance the impact of exposure to EMF from a GSM telephone combined with calcium deprivation on flax seedling growth, or the impact of EMF combined with UVB radiation on cucumber seedling growth. These studies raise the question whether the impact of EMF may add itself to the effects of other environmental factors and what practical consequences this might have for individual plants and ecosystems.
Some studies have focused on the biological effects of electromagnetic radiation. Microwave radiation has been reported as producing adverse effects in the central nervous system CNS, including headache, sleep disorders, anxiety, cognitive dysfunction and neurogenesis impairment in both humans and animals. In vegetation. Field studies of 50 to 60 Hz exposure to plants and crops have shown no effects at the levels normally found in the environment, nor even at field levels directly under power lines up to 765 kV. However, the variability of parameters associated with environmental conditions that affect plant growth, example soil, weather, would likely preclude observation of any possible low-level effects of electric field exposure. Damage to trees is well known to occur at electric field strengths far levels due to corona discharge at the tips of the leaves. Such field levels are found only close to the conductors of very high voltage power lines. In aquatic life Although all organisms are exposed to the geomagnetic field, marine animals are also exposed to natural electric fields caused by sea currents moving through the geomagnetic field. Electrosensitive fish, such as sharks and rays in oceans and catfish in fresh water, can orient themselves in response to very low electric fields by means of electroreceptive organs. Some investigators have suggested that human-made EMF from undersea power cables could interfere with the prey sensing or navigational abilities of these animals in the immediate vicinity of the sea cables. However, none of the studies performed to date to assess the impact of undersea cables on migratory fish, example salmon and eels, and all the relatively immobile fauna inhabiting the sea floor, example mollusks, have found any substantial behavioral or biological impact. Environmental studies are needed since any adverse influence of EMF on plants, animals such as birds, and other living organisms, while important in their own right, could also ultimately impact on human life and health. However, much of the existing work in this area has been scattered in approach and uneven in quality. A coordinated research agenda that addresses the scientific issues raised by increasing environmental EMF levels does not exist. In view of the facts discussed above, there is no urgent need to give research priority to this field over other health topics. However, while there is a small but active research effort in this area, it would be informative to design bioeffects research with wildlife species in mind and aimed at identifying their possible responses to new human-made sources of EMF energy. Appropriate choice of species for study is very important, example birds since they can enter areas of high field strength develop environmental guidelines for EMF exposure at different frequencies, drawing on information from well-performed studies. Such guidelines might resemble those developed for human health, but with appropriately adapted thresholds to ensure that EMF levels are below those producing adverse consequences in the environment. If you like this video, we will be glad if you could give us a thumbs up and see with your comments below and share this video lesson, we hope to see you on the next upload. Hey, that's pretty good.